ULC, thank you so much for joining our Wednesday night live service. We're here in Pastor's home tonight, and um, Pastor Elena is still having some medical challenges, so if you will just keep on praying for her, and thank you for those of you who have already been praying. Um, they've opened up their home for us to do service for you all tonight. And I want to let you know that Sunday mornings, we are back in the building at 10 a.m. So if you want to be in the building with your church family, please come join us. We would love to see your faces. Um, we can't touch you yet, but we'd at least get to see your face, and that would be cool. So come see us on Sunday mornings. But right now, if you just want to worship with us from your home, we're going to do some worship right now. So if you'll just welcome his presence right where you are. Father, we welcome you. Wherever we are is where you're willing to meet us. Your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people, Father. So as we lift up your name, will you just allow your spirit to come dwell with us? We need your spirit more than ever, Father. So will you just allow us to feel your presence close and let it be something that's tangible for us, that your presence would just rest over us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. And so the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. No shadow, no 
won't shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Line you won't tear down. Coming after me.
Everybody that has been 
part of this broadcast or this post or whatever it is. I don't even know what else to call it anymore. It's just crazy to me. I want to thank Shane Binkley. I want to thank Malachi Morgan, my son, my middle son, Miss Angie Kabler, Dr. Jason Kabler, coming straight from work, getting this done so that we can get the word to you. And so Tanisha Morley, I love her. I want to thank Miss Olivia and, of course, my daughter Elizabeth and this great young man right here. I'm very proud of him. Um, met him years ago. And I'm glad to see what God's doing in his life. Let's let's check out something real quick. And I'm going to pray before we go uh, into the word. But let's just take a moment to just saturate in this moment. And let your heart be filled with joy and peace. This is what we need. That's what God sent his only begotten son to give is quality living. So... Get ready for a word right now, but while you're doing that, as I pull my iPad out and start pulling scriptures together, I want you to just rest in this moment and enjoy this moment. You deserve this moment. Many of you are working, you're trying to take care of your kids, you're trying to take care of education, you're trying to take care of all kinds of stuff. You're multitasking, and I know the feeling. I empathize with you. But right now, I want to give you a word, and I want to share something with you that I think that really, really will bring some insight to what we're all going through, all right? Take five seconds. Thank you so much, Matt. I want to share some things with you that I really feel like are relevant in this season of our life. And um, in this season of society, What I mean, everybody's going through it. I want to share this with you. Romans chapter 4, verse 15 through verse 16 says this. He says, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ... Yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you. In other words, birthed you, made you, made you, shaped you, formed you. He says, through Christ Jesus I have done that. And he says, I have begotten you through the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to come back and deal with that in just a minute. Wherefore, I beseech you, in other words, I plead with you, I plead with you for your sake and for the world's sake. He, this is what he said. And if you study it, I don't have time to go into it all. But here's what he said. He says, I beseech you, I beg you, I plead with you, please get some understanding, understand the seasons, uh, what's going on in your time, in, in, in your community. He says, this is what I do. So I beseech you, I beg you to please be ye followers of me. You know, uh, one of the greatest gifts that I believe God ever gave to me was a real father. Um, and I pay homage to him right now, Bishop Joseph Morgan. He is the epitome of what you call a great father. And I'm not just speaking of biologically, I'm speaking of spiritually as well. One of the most integral men I ever have known, and I hope you're watching, Dad, um, because he stands for what's right. And, you know, that's the thing that we've got to understand right now. we got to stand for what's right. It's so easy to be dragged over here or dragged over there by opinions of different people uh, because of their cultures. The most important thing we can do is stand up for what is right. And I am proud of my church, Celebration of Life Church. By the way, please continue to support. Please continue to do what you're doing right now. I thank you so much for allowing us to, uh, through finances, to penetrate this gospel into the communities that we're living in. But I love, I love what Paul says here. He says, I beseech you. Be ye followers of me, or Christ said this, and through through Paul, he's you know quoting him, and and the thing about it is, is that when you understand 
about a father, and I know I got a little bit of time here, so I'm trying to scroll through my notes and be very dis, uh, decisive about what I want to bring out and what's most important to bring out. I got seven minutes. My uh, floor director, Dr. Cavish, <laughs> but um, I want to give you I want to give you a couple of mandates that God said. He said, first of all, in Genesis one twenty six, He says, "Let us make man in, in our image." God said this. He says, "Let us make man in our own Im- image." Reflecting, reflecting God's image and nature responsible for earth. Do we really understand how big God is? He has placed us in a position and a posture to be prosperous in this. All right. Here's our mandate right here. Prosper, good health, peace, financial prosperity, reproduce spiritually in the kingdom, and physically. Watch this. Fill the earth. Fill the earth. In other words, spreading the gospel. And if you look at that, you'll understand that that's what he means. He said, spreading the gospel. Fill the earth with my glory. Situations destroy our lives. And so many circumstances that we face, it's it's very challenging for us because we have to almost kind of figured out minute to minute. I know some of you, if you're like me, you're figuring it out from minute to minute. Watch this right here. This is one thing I want to really challenge you with right here. Live life. Do not let life live you. I want to say it one more time. Live life. Don't let life live you. And I say that, and let me just kind of just build on that just for a second. So many people They let life dictate their happiness, their peace, their joy, all of these things. But I am encouraging you right now to not let life dictate you. You dictate life. He says, I've come to give you, give you life and life more abundant. In other words, I'm giving you life. Do what you will with it. But, you know, we were talking to the kids earlier and, and, you know, I've, Right now, I'm not really into taking three points in a poem. I'm really into talking to my heart, talking from my heart right now. And, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, I want to point out about fathers, you know, I think I, I was watching a uh, post today about how Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about uh, riots. And... Um, and I have to be honest with you, my heart yearns for that type of leadership and fathership right now. You know, we talked to the kids earlier, and I listened to them talk, and I really was interested in hearing what they had to say about their fathers and how they relate their spiritual father to their uh, earthly father. And it was amazing because... I kept hearing that the, fa- the spiritual father always makes up the difference for what the, you know, the earthly father misses out on. And um, it, was, it was very, very intriguing to watch and listen. Of course, you know, one of my children were talking about it, and so it was good for me to hear what her thoughts were about me as being a father. But I will tell you something right now. If ever we need fathers to speak up, we need fathers. Let me, let me show you something right here. I took down some notes right quick um, about a father. Let me give you the acronyms for a father. F, faithful, forgiving, funny. A, action, active prayer, available. I'm telling you something, we need the availability of fathers like never before. You know, the scripture teaches that, um, that if we don't listen and we don't incline our ear to our Heavenly Father, then we are bastards. And, you know, one of the things that's, that's made me so upset through the years is that, you know, we talk about fathers being neglectful, but what about sons and daughters being neglectful? Because that relationship is a two-way street. 
And so, and that's what the scripture talks about. And and, uh, when Paul talks about it, he says, listen to me. He says, if you can't be corrected and chastised by your spiritual father or your heavenly father or your biological father, and you're a bastard, basically, and you place yourself into that position. And so that's a two-way street. But the most important thing I want to speak to is how much we need spiritual fathers, men of God, people who have real, true, genuine doctrine to stand up and teach our children that you don't have to be out here in the streets and be bastards. This is a season right now for all of the real leaders to stand up. And, you know, for me, I'm all up in my children's face right now. And I'm going to always teach them to make the right decision and, more importantly, Importantly, the next right decision, because sometimes you live in minute by minute. But this is a time I need every father to look far beyond your present circumstances and understand that this is a season for you to speak up. Raise your children up. Many people in the community that they just don't have people speaking into their lives. And that's what we have decided to do, to do at Celebration of Life. We are going to father and we're going to raise and advise and counsel your children and you. Celebration of Life loves you. And we are so excited that you are a part of this community. We look forward to spending more time with you. Understand that this is a time for you to raise up. Do not be a calamity howler. Stand up. Speak good words, positive words. And let's be peacemakers because that's what being blessed is all about, is being a peacemaker. God bless you. Don't forget to support your ministry. Celebration of Life, all of you who are watching, members, we love you. We miss you, and we're thankful that you are not just members but active members in this church. God bless you very much. Peace and blessings.